Hello. Hi, everyone. Um, so thank you for the introduction. I'm very excited to be here. Uh, like mentioned, I'm a psychologist, and I'm also an artist. My main media of art are dance, photography, and visual art. So tonight, uh, I'm going to take you on a little story about an art se series called Ghosts of Rorschach and kind of a cascade of interesting and wonderful events that led to that and interesting collaborations and what I think is an interesting story of intersections between art and science. So we'll start with some light questions. Yeah? Okay. So underneath the surface, in the place that you don't know or understand within yourself, in that dark abyss, what what lurks there exactly? And how, how would you know what that is? Psychology, for those of us who skipped psych, psych 101 in college or university or whatever, is a scientific study of human mind. That means it's a study of human emotions, behavior, relationships, things that are conscious and unconscious. So these questions to me are fascinating. And one of the most fascinating things to me is the fact that in order to navigate this complex world, this wonderful complex world, one of the most important things for us to do is to have an understanding of ourselves. And the paradox related to the fact that that's often the understanding that eludes us, what's inside our own mind. Some of you might have guessed this already, but some of the psychological theories that really inform the kind of work that I'm interested in in terms of psychological science date all the way back to Mr. Sigmund Freud here and his little carpet covered couch. I'm not really sure what's with the carpet on the couch. I really don't know about that part, but they're really into it. There's carpet everywhere in that picture. That's his original couch. Uh, we've come a long time, like a long way since then. There's been a lot of build, a lot of improvement on Freud's ideas. We have really taken them to new scientific heights. And now what is called psychodynamic therapy is considered an evidence-based scientific treatment for mental health difficulties. And there's a lot of scientific research that supports its process. To switch gears for a second, to go into the art side of things, I'm gonna take you on a trip back to time, even though I'm not a physicist. Um, and I'm going to take you back a couple years when I was uh, during grad school, kind of doing my science thing, doing my art thing, and what was I doing with the art thing? I was mostly working on stuff like that, sort of paintings, mixed media, that sort of thing. And then I also started getting back to dance. I uh, started training in contemporary dance and in ballet. A year after that, I started doing point, which is those wonderful but cruel shoes where you have to sort of hop on top of, they're super fun, and was lucky enough to work with uh, Victoria Dance Theatre and to start performing and showcasing some of my original choreography in Victoria on Vancouver Island. So what is the Rorschach? What is it? Right? The Rorschach is a psychological test. Okay? This is a Rorschach-like image. It's an ink blot, essentially, that's made on paper and by folding the paper, it's made to be symmetrical. What is the test? Well, the unconscious, obviously. It actually, by talking, by administering the test, it gives us a lot of information about how a person feels, thinks, about their personality, essentially. So to me, this was really fascinating, and that was the time in grad school when I was really studying this test quite a lot. And I really can't do it justice, but suffice to say that it has a lot of evidence behind it and that it can be used in a valid and a reliable way to understand our emotional life better. So I was playing with some different ideas, right? And doing the art, doing the science, not dancing because the surgery. Um, I started playing with an old photograph that my friend, uh, photographer friend, Ian Sparks and I created. And I made that and I was like, oh, I like that. That's weird. I like it. <laughs> Uh, then I did a bit of a test photo shoot, just using myself as a model and someone to take the pictures and started manipulating the pictures to make them into ink blot like shapes. That one looks, looks like a frog to me, but I don't know what you guys see. Then it evolved into a few paintings, 
kind of combining the, the painting and the photography aspect of it. And I like this ballerina with a Rorschach head thing. It's like, that's, that's cool. I like that. But I wasn't quite satisfied with what I've done. Whoops, nope, too far. So I wanted to do more. I really wanted to evolve it into a series and I wanted to involve other people. I wanted to work with others. So at this point, as an aside, I was sort of skeptical about Twitter. I'm pretty sure that, and mostly due to ignorance and being new to it, pretty sure I taught an undergrad class and referred to Twitter as sort of the mirror of our collective narcissism because I just thought it was just selfies and that's it. <laughs> I didn't realize that there's more to it. Uh, but I bravely and very skeptically went on Twitter and tweeted at Broken Rhythms Victoria and Dance Victoria, among others, just kind of saying, hey, I want to make some photographs of uh, using dancers' bodies to make ink blots. Anybody? Anyone? Huh? Huh? And yeah, amazingly, people responded. Diana Sonic Henderson, who's the director of Broken Rhythms, she's Victoria-based, and Dance Victoria, uh, which is an organization that promotes dance on Vancouver Island. They give us free space. And Diana gave me free dancers. So suddenly I had five dancers to work with and space. And it was fantastic. Um, Ian Sparks, my photographer friend, uh, was also part of the shoot. He was more focused on capturing the movement of the dancers and doing that part of the photography. And his help was invaluable to me because I was still very much like a new learning, beginning, fumbling through the photography part of things. So we got together for the shoot. The results. To me, were mind-blowing. And Ian and I have worked together many times uh, on many photo shoots, but Diana and I have never even met. We've never met her dancers. Um, and honestly, if I could take the energy that we had at the shoot and like bottle it and sell it, I feel like it would just be invaluable. Because things were going smoothly. These people that I've never met before from completely different disciplines. Diana, by the way, is actually doing, is a scientist as well. She's doing a, a, her degree in sociology right now at UVic, which is also I think worth uh, mentioning. Uh, and it was really, really cool. I ended up with about 600 pictures that I took, and then I went to editing them and making them into a block. And I really wanted them to range from the shapes that looked really obvious, where you could see where the dancers are. You could see where the different body parts are, where one person begins and another ends. To the more ambiguous where things are starting to get a little less clear. Things don't quite look right. And then on to the very abstract. Where, like, what's going on in there? What? I don't know. Do you know? No, I don't know either. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> and just like the test itself, what each of you see in that what memories or thoughts or emotions or ideas that inspires is going to be completely different. And each of you might see more than one thing as well, which I think is a fascinating idea. We're all really happy with the results. Myself, Diana, the dancers, Dance Victoria, Ian, so we thought, why well, stop there? So we're like, okay, we're not going to stop. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep it going. Um, so we basically designed an event around the whole series. We had it at Dance Victoria. And what we really wanted to do is plan a kind of event where we really get to interact with the audience. We really wanted the audience to think about this concept of perception, subjectivity, the unconscious, what does it mean, what kinds of, how does our personality come out in the way that we look and interpret something like an ambiguous ink blot shape. So we had this event uh, where we had, basically we had a bunch of dance and we had a bunch of audience participation things as well. For example, the audience had a chance to make their own ink blots. As you can see in the little middle bottom image there, capture it and take a little piece of artwork that they made with them. They also had a chance to answer Rorschach's classic question, what do you see? In reference to that moth butterfly looking like image. And we read the, question, the answers back to the audience. My favorite was space kitten with wings and antenna. That's what a person saw in that, and I think that's amazing. But we also got other answers. Three ninjas, death, okay, disorganization, a woman crawling out of her grave. We had like a box with like a hundred answers. It was, it was amazing. So we got to know the audience, and the, the audience got to know themselves 
and one another in these interesting ways. Uh, and Diana and her dancers also did, uh, did some dance, and interestingly inspired by photography. It's usually the other way around, right? Dancers do the dance and the photographers click and just try to capture it. What Diana did is she took inspiration from the shapes that I created in the photographs, and she created a dance based on that. And then that actually created an inkblot as they did the dance. Diana and I also did some contact improvisation, playing with this idea of ink on paper and kind of embodying that. So actually, Teresa, if you would not mind being my super amazing helper person at the moment to help pull those videos up, I can show you a glimpse of a little bit of what that looked like. kind of improvising, that's completely improvised, the first time we've been on stage together, and before that we had like an hour to sort of be like, hey, so how are you with like touch and dance? All right, that's sweet, cool, all right, let's do this. Um, th this one is choreographed. This is the one that's choreographed by Diana that I was mentioning, inspired by the ink blot shape. watch it there if you want. Um, so those are Diana's dancers, the same dancers who were in the photos, some of which you saw. So the part that also was really cool about the event uh, that I felt I learned a lot from is the opportunity for the dancers, the audience, to interact in this different ways. The audience didn't just come and see these flat pictures of these dancers, they talked to them. We spaced it out so that we had short breaks and each performance was fairly brief. Um, and you could talk to the, the ink-covered dancers in between, uh, which people really took the opportunity to do and was really, really cool and organic in that way. So, this kind of leaves me with a few reflections. 
what can come from just a simple little tweet. I didn't think much would come from it. I just thought kind of nobody would respond. I would go and cry and sort of get over it. Right? <laughs> uh, I never thought that I would uh, basically create this, this series, take it to that extent. I never thought this event would come out of it. I never thought this uh, a beautiful friendship with Diana would develop. Some of the pictures that you saw actually earlier is her and her dancers as we continued collaborating throughout the years since then. Um, I also learned just the value of having an event that really brings different aspects together. Psychology, the science of psychology, art, that's both visual and dance. Those are often not mixed either. You go to dance, you go to the theater, you go to an art gallery. So bringing them all together, I think was really interesting. Okay. This series came out of a time when I had a void with dance because I had to take time off. There's no way around it. So this is my way to connect to it by doing the photography, doing the painting, and then doing this piece, and then eventually getting back into dance and reconnecting with it by actually moving and actually dancing. Um, so just generally speaking, I am really committed to my art, and I'm always looking for people to collaborate with. I'd like to revive this and do a similar type of an event here around this series or around a different theme. And I also have some random, vague, and completely undefined ideas about psychology and physics and kind of intersecting that in art form somehow. I don't know. It's, it's, it's up in there somewhere. <laughs> um, so feel free to like find me on the Twitter, the Facebook, whatever. I know how to use them now. <laughs> I'm not against them anymore. All, it's all good. Um, and thank you very much for your time and attention. are that I've made like as the photographs are, are not symmetrical on purpose. The Rorschach test itself is fairly symmetrical. So some of them as um, some of the beginning images that I show, they're just a little bit off. And that's also to kind of um, illustrate the idea that when something, when someone is really struggling with something in terms of uh, ability to perceive reality correctly, the Rorschach to them, they will see things that an average person just would not see, right? And that's part of the value of the test. Any other burning questions? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, how, how did it, like, is it from, you know, have you danced your whole life? Or like, how did it, how did you combine the two together? Where did they come from? Like, did they come from different places? Or is psychology based background in the dance? It definitely came from different places. I danced when I was younger and mostly in ballet and then had a long break and then only got back to it in grad school. So definitely I was interested in dance, interested in ballet way before I knew what psychology was. I grew up in the Soviet Union, so ballet was kind of like a big thing. And I was told by my mother that I like watched Swan Lake like this without a peep for hours and hours when I was like little. I have no memory of this, but I believe her. And then the psychology interest came way later when I moved to Canada and went to university and all that stuff. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh,